All right, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time you've given us to uh, engage in this uh, concept, this flow, chapel-wise, of breakfast and Bible. Lord, I pray, Lord, that every word that is spoken today will bring life. In. And uh, as we discuss this topic that we have for today, that we'll be able to glean from it and keep uh, a level of consistency in every area, Lord. We appreciate you, Father. In your name we pray, amen. amen. All right, so today our topic is... Um, Keeping the same energy. What does that mean? Have you? I know y'all heard that. I don't know if that's past you all. That might have been. You know, sometimes old people say uh, phrases or colloquialisms after it has passed, and you guys are like, "Man, that, we said that last summer. We don't even say keeping the same energy no more." But for, if it's past tense or if it's present tense, what does keeping the same energy mean? What does it mean to keep the same energy? Yes, sir. To maintain. You're having like beef or somewhere else or something like that. Mm-hmm. And people will say, keep that same energy yeah. next time. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't show up or something, that means you're scared. That you're scared, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Jace. Oh, my bad, that's Yeah, so today's topic is going to be along the lines of uh, kind of using it in a different way, um, keeping that same energy in every facet of your life. A couple of questions, real quick, before we get into some scriptures. Um, what all needs to have the same amount of energy? What in a, a young man's day to day life should we keep the same energy? Before we get into that, let me explain what I mean by keeping the same energy in this context. It means um, keeping the same energy that I have for athletics with my academics, keeping the same energy I have for for, you know, girlfriends, you know, associations or whatever y'all do at this age, keeping that same energy everywhere. Right. Uh, the same energy, the same excitement, the same uh, fervor, the same passion that I have for one thing, I have to have it for all things. Why? Why is that important? To keep that same energy in every important area of life. Because you don't want to, like, so-called uh, switch up. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, sometimes that's called, like, being bipolar. Yeah. Like, switching. Switching up all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Zay. Oh, like, being you don't become lazy. You don't become lazy. That's real. Go ahead, Vincent. Uh, sometimes you can put your energy in the wrong stuff and uh, not put energy in the good stuff. That's good. Give me one second. I'm going to give me a mark. I need to mark it right on this board. I'll be right back. Oh, here's one. You got one? Draw a wrist mark. Thanks, fam. Appreciate you. So, we said those things with what now? We said uh, so that you don't switch up. And what you say, Vincent? I said that you could put energy in the wrong stuff. Okay. So, what we're going to, we'll start here. Um, so what are some of the areas that we should keep that same energy in? In y'all's work. Go ahead. God, yeah. And why should we keep that same energy or a uh, positive, exciting energy with God? Why is it important? Because God keeps the same like with he keeps us. It, he, keeps it with it, us. he keeps the same with us. On that point, keep your hand, well, keep your keep your points to, uh, in your head when I get to you. Uh, why is it comforting that God keeps his same energy? Yes. Because he'll never, he'll never leave us or anything. Yeah, and yeah. And he'll keep the same energy for everybody. He doesn't love anybody over us. Yeah, yeah. Who else? Go ahead. So I mean, say. Uh, show us how to like, keep the same energy. Yeah. So we said show. And what you say, uh, TJ? Um, um, he doesn't pick anybody else over us. Yeah, he's consistent he with everyone. Everybody the same. Anybody else? <clears throat> Keeping us a yes, right? Go ahead, man. Um, because he's the same every day. He's the same. The thing about keep God keeping that same energy is that if God was fake like us, man, the world's in trouble. Right? As believers, we should endeavor to be consistent in every area. What's another area that we should keep this keep positive, high energy in uh uh in just in y'all everyday life? Go ahead, Savion. School. School. And why school? Um, because that's what's going to help us to get out Helps later, yep. Yeah. <sighs> sports. Sports. Why sports? Mindset. Mindset. What else? Uh, jobs. Jobs, yep. Yeah. Work. 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 Yeah, work. Your body, yep. Yeah. Work. These three are perfect. The thing is, unfortunately, a lot of people... They have, let's, let's, let's do some math, not quite math, but 
They'll, they'll give 100% energy here, 10% energy here, and most people 5% energy there, right? The issue with energy, I'm going to give you definition of energy. Energy by definition is the strength and vitality required for sustained physical and mental activity. Energy by definition is strength and vitality required for sustained physical or mental activity. This is important for us to process because we'll go this direction. What are some things that gives you energy? Food. We said food. food. We said music. Sleep. 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 What else? Rest. Rest. Yep, sleep and rest. What else? Relaxation. Relaxation, yep. This is all good. Different variation. Food, yep. The sun, the sun uh, outside. Wait, what's the question? What uh, What are some things that gives you energy? Uh, oh, like Body, music, energy, yeah. minerals, Man, right. vitamins and minerals, water, music water. Up yep, music up there. Others, others, yep. God, people. shopping, God, people. God. God gives you energy. Shopping, shopping. Okay, that's Friends. cool. <laughs> Friends. All right, so all these are perfect, right? <clears throat> All these things. Now, think about this. If you don't have energy, can you sustain anything? No. no. So now we got to talk about how to manage our energy. Because managing energy is important. Come on here. Come on. The issue is a lot of us, we get into a place where... We gain or get, try to gather our energy for, uh, from all the wrong things, right? The issue is keeping the same energy means that I have to make sure that I manage my energy to such a degree that I keep these things sustained. Now, food gives us energy. We have to eat food because if we don't have food, you're lightheaded, you're sleepy, you're tired, etc. Music gives you energy because the soundtrack of your life really plays a part of your life. The unfortunate thing is... Does Burger King and vegetables give you energy? Yes. Yeah, but what's, what's the difference between the two? One's good and one's what? Bad. 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 So, so there are certain foods that give you, nine times out of ten, good positive energy. There's music out there. It'll give you energy, but it'll give you energy in the wrong direction, right? Because music is one of those dangerous things that I think a lot of us don't really understand at y'all's age. Go ahead, Jace. Yeah, come on, get some more. It, oh, is it anymore? Nah, ain't no more, man. Oh, I know, I know. So, for instance, there's good music, there's bad music. Bad music gives you the type of energy to do the wrong things. Sleep, rest, relaxation is important. Going outside is important. All these things are important because energy is all you have. Yesterday's energy, yesterday's habits gives you energies for tomorrow's uh, uh, happenings. For instance... If I don't get sleep last night, if I don't eat well, I won't be able to do well today. So how can I keep the same energy that I have on Monday on Tuesday? I have to have a mindset that says, all right, man, I got to do what I have to do to prioritize my life to make sure that I have life tomorrow. Now, um, we've all heard the phrase, the window of opportunity. What does that mean? A chance. Yeah. And they also say with windows opportunity, those windows can what? Close. Oh For instance, Kobe, uh, Jordan, all these people, Tom Brady, um, any, any sphere of, of, of life, individuals had a certain mindset that says, I have to make sure I practice certain things every single day to make sure that I'm successful every day. And the issue with this culture is that a lot of people have all the energy for the bottom half of a thing versus all the energy for the top part. Now, we'll do that. Priorities is what? What's the, what's the definition of priorities? Uh, the most, the most, the most, the most your most important. Oh, sure. Your most important task. The most important, right? Primary now, important. list 10 things. God. God. Now, we'll start with God. Do you think most people got God here or they got God not even in their top 10? How is that dangerous? Because it's not the Bible. Because a lot of people don't like believe that God should be first. Yeah. 
Even though God should be first. Yeah, he should. Why Why should he be first? Because he has made us. He made us. He died on the cross. He supplies everything else. I have this phrase that I say, God has to be number one, number two, versus in everything. That means he has to be in the center of everything here, right? If not, there won't be no sustainability. For instance, um, if there was no sun, there would be no what? No light or life, right? Everything on earth would die. So if if this if this if the if God is not at the center of everything in our lives, how can we have energy for everything else? What should be number two? Family. 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 God. Family. 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 You. Family. Why should you be number two? Because you gotta put yourself first for others. Why is it important? You forget about yourself. Who's heard of the phrase burnout? Burnout. What is burnout? Yes. I don't know burnout. Oh, your energy gone. Your energy's gone. What are some things that will burn you out and make sure that you can't really show out in the areas that you should? Woman. <laughs> Women. Yeah. How does having a girl how does having a girl at the wrong time burn you out? Because, like, because you don't have to write lust. You're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. Not ready. It's because some lust. It depends. Does some of them are quiet too much? No, some of them are just distractions. Yeah. Distractions. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> now let's keep going. Keep what happened. What's wrong? Wrong intentions. Wrong intentions. Yeah, Jamie. You can have a kid by mistake. All that. All that is what burn you out. What's your mind? What should be number three? That's oh, family. 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 So now what we're saying is, is that a lot of people are burnt out in areas that should be burning. Because if it's not burning, there's no earning, right? Like, I have to keep the... Uh, I'll give you an example of the Word of God. Uh, the Bible talks about the t- uh, ten virgins, five wise and five foolish, right? The five foolish virgins, or oh, all virgins, had oil in their lamp. Back in the Bible days, they have to have oil in their jar to, to burn light, right? And so these women were waiting for the bridegroom. The bridegroom was, quote-unquote, Jesus, right? So... The five wise girls was like, you know what? I'm going to preserve my oil. I'm not going to burn my oil unnecessarily. Um, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to blow my light out when I need to and light it when I need to. The five foolish ones, what they did was they kept their oil burning so that when it was time for them to need their oil, they had none left. That's for instance, you know, you got a game today, but you playing three hours of football Remember we had say we had a field day today, and we said we're going outside to play football. A smart athlete would do what? Rest. Might rest, or no, they, they, not like, they might run a couple of routes. Play quarterback. Not be, yeah, yeah, play quarterback. Right. See what I'm saying? So those adjustments is based upon the the opportunity they want to have, right? But if you out there balling out there on the field where the, the points don't count, and then it's time to play, you're burnt out, right? That's a tragedy that a lot of us do is that. Well, we have the wrong energy. We have the right energy for the wrong things. And then when it's time to do the main thing, we don't succeed. Right. And so we have to understand what it means to have so much energy that we can keep the same energy everywhere. Right. And unfortunately, like I said before, a lot of you kids, man, a lot of people, adults, people at my age, man, they don't they burn their energy. man. Then when God really wants to use them. God can't use them. Like, do you know God loves us all equally? We know that, right? Yes, yes, yes. But he don't trust us all equally. Why don't God trust us all equally? Because, because he knows you're not ready. He knows you're not ready. That's right. We say, go ahead. Each of us do different things. Do different things, right? And so if you give 100% energy to your sports, but only give 10% to, you, to academics, you can't say anything or be upset with if you can't play, right? Yes. So now I have to understand... All things connect. Let's say, it, say it with me. All things, All things. connect. Yeah. Right now, trust me, let's, I'll keep it a band with you. I'll keep it real with you. 
A lot of the stuff that you're using in school today, you're not going to use in life. I understand that. But the work ethic you use now, you have to use all days of your life. Because let me tell you something about life. 60% of it, maybe 70% of it, are, are filled with things that you don't want to do, but you have to do, to enjoy the 30% of the things you want to do. Right? So when it comes to money, I, I, I don't, no matter how you feel about money, you got to give 10 to the church, 15 to the church, you give 20 to the Uncle Sam. In order, for, in order for you to be set up and not be in jail and not be uh, 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 messed up with your money, you got to take care of certain things, right? No matter how you feel about it, there are certain principles that you have to adhere to. For instance, if you don't lift, if you don't, let's, let's make it plain, y'all. everybody plays ball in here. Like, like, if you don't shoot in the gym, you can't get mad if you don't get a chance in the game, right? Practice is important. So now if I, keep, if I only get hype for the game, there was a video uh, Deion Sanders said. He was like, I might, I might play this for other guys. I totally should have. It just came to mind now. He was like, uh, uh, when he was talking about practice, he says players come into practice just to practice, but not to dominate in practice. What he was saying was he was like, you have to have a purpose for your practice. What's more important, practice or the game? Practice. Why is practice more important than the game? Because, because you, can make, you can make like you can make like all your life follow the practice and then you can learn. So why should I go harder in practice than I do in the game? Well, well, you play harder because it's necessarily. Well, I'm just gonna hear Caleb. Go ahead, Caleb. It'd be a lot easier if my practice is hard. The play in the game is easier. Go ahead. Okay. Well, sometimes that's not true because. Most of the time, you get, well, sometimes games is important. Because say, no, how, no matter how far you make it, if you don't, like, do get in practice, like, say you made it to their base, if you're not a practice player, they're not going to let you play. That's real. That's real. That can all connect. You can work as hard as you want, like, off practice and do good in games. But, like, if you're not good in practice, then nobody yeah. will want you. Because practice gives what to the coach? It makes the coach what you? Uh, you want to. Trust you. Yeah. Trust you. Like, if I know for a fact that you're going hard in practice, you're keeping that same game day energy and yesterday's practice, man, I could put you in the game. It all connects. I think we love to play, but we don't like to prepare. Play is fun. But the greats, let me, I'm going to put you on something real quick. Uh, I say this all the time when I talk about these things. I don't know what I'm going to keep, but we'll uh, keep the same energy on this side of the board, right? So, there's a word. I don't know if you can read my cursor. What does that, what does that say? Fundamentals. What's, what's the, uh, what are some words in fundamentals? Fun. 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 Mental. Mental. And mentals. Mental. If you truly want to have fun and whatever it is that you want to do in life, you have to have your mentals together. Not only just your mentals, you got to make sure that you do the little things well. Fundamentals, like, like who's, who's the big fundamental? Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan had how many championships? Five. 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 Uh, was he flashy? No. Yeah, no. 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 <laughs> was was he is he is he any in, in, in a lot of people's top five? Yes. Favorite no. players? No. 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 But he got the job done. Yes. Fundamentals. If you can't handle the fundamentals, you're not going to really have fun. Fundamentals means uh, I practice not till I get it right, but I practice till I can't get it wrong. <clears throat> Fundamentals says, you know what? I may not use algebra in real life. I may not use history in real life, but I'm going to put the same energy, work ethic in everything because the work ethic I get from the fundamentals will help me to have fun. There's fundamentals in business. There's fundamentals in, like, the fundamentals in the NBA. We talked about, uh, was it NFL, when Miss Riley posted a video of the two linemen that was talking about the details. Like, like growth is in the details. Everybody looks at the game, but what about the angles? What about uh, the different uh, things that you can master? If you're not a master of anything, you'll be a slave to someone else mastering. You got to think about that. So now you got to shift your mindset and say, okay, I'm going to give the same energy <coughs> that I give <coughs> United Faith to my faith. I'm going to give the same energy that I give the United Faith to my faith in God. See, what happened is we play United Faith today. And I'm going, I'm going, I'm ready. You got your headphones on, you got your music going, you ain't talking to your mom in the car, mom don't talk to me, it's game day. 
Take me to Burger King. I don't want to hear nothing from you, mom. I don't want to hear no lip from you. It's game day. Now, y'all would be crazy to do that, bro. But what I'm saying is, is that y'all have that energy all day. Y'all on y'all best behavior on game day. Y'all don't want, y'all don't want to give a teacher uh, uh, a thought <laughs> to put you on the bench, right? Right? But imagine if you gave God that same energy. He the coach of your life. He's greater than your coach. Your coach can get you in the game. But a coach in heaven will get you in a game called life. And he'll give you some playing time. But the one thing you don't want to happen is to be on the bench in life. <laughs> There's a lot of people, their benches in a prison. Mm-hmm. Their benches with three or four baby mamas. They, they, they can't even play in a game, that their game of life, because they didn't put the right practice in. This is real stuff, man. Like, what's better? Because one day, let me tell you about my life. I had hoop dreams. But I dribbled my ball. I dribbled a ball for the last time. When it counted, there's going to come a day where even if you go to the NBA, you're going to dribble the ball for the last time. Now, what's the difference between Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, um, give me one some Magic Johnson, um, and other NBA players? What's the difference? Or a lot of other NBA players. What's the difference? Mentality. Mentality. Why? What the, what's their mentality? Hard work. Hard work. What else? Uh, being the best version. Being the best version. But I'm looking for something else. What did they do after the game? After the game was over, what happened? No, no, no. I'm talking about after the NBA, after their NBA career was over, what happened? Business. Yep. They took that same energy in basketball, shifted into business. Now, I forgot the numbers. Sixty percent towards up of how many players receive millions of dollars and go bankrupt. People think, people think that just because you get money, you're good. No, the fundamentals of money is what keeps you having money. If you're bad with $100, you're going to be bad with 1000 If you're bad with 1000 you're going to be bad with 10 So these people, they had opportunities. They had the energy to get them into a place, but they didn't have the energy to sustain that place or to create a new place after that place. So energy says, you know what? I got to match my energy with people that match my energy. Because if I don't, I won't create synergy. Synergy is when energies come together and it creates something. Right? It, it, it creates something special. Those other athletes, man, they went to the club. I remember one time they were talking about how Kobe Bryant was, um, I think it was USA Basketball. They was playing in, in the Olympics. And uh, Carmelo... Dwayne Wade all, and LeBron, they all went to the club that night. And when they came home from the club, Kobe was going to the gym. Kobe, what you doing? Going to the gym. All of them could have been married. I don't know at that time, but I don't know how Kobe with him and his wife. But what I'm saying is, Kobe didn't go to the club. Kobe said, I'm going to the gym. And after, the, after them seeing that mentality, what did they start doing? Kobe, with, uh, I'm going with you. Because, yo, go ahead. Uh, John Morant, I heard John Morant um, was in the club during the NBA Finals. And you see why he lost. And, and, get, and, look at, and look at the differences the difference between Golden State and Memphis Grizzlies. What's the difference? They experience. Teamwork. Experience, teamwork. But what else? What did Memphis do a lot, but they don't? Shoot. They talk too much. Oh, yeah. John Morant talk. Like, you don't talk until after you've walked. Oh, I remember. I remember. Uh, it, it was Memphis Grizzlies and... Uh, the Lakers, they were playing. And Shan and Sharp? You talking about the other game the other day? No, not the other day. And uh, it was Jaron Jackson and, like, Ja and uh, – uh, I forgot, Dylan Brooks, yeah. And they were talking smack to LeBron, and he was like uh, – Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like – uh, some like don't talk like, and he was like, uh, John Murray's like, Brian Chill, and he was like, don't play like that. Next play, he caved out ducks. <laughs> see, oh, see I, that play, he, I give it, I give an example of that. LeBron, uh, LeBron, crazy. LeBron was probably saying, you know what, we're 12th in the league, we 12th in the Western Conference. It's another game of a back to back. I'm just trying to beat, um, Kareem's record. What happens when your bad energy wakens up somebody else's positive energy? Like, like, like sometimes when I play ball, I'm cool until someone talks junk. I'm just here for the cardio. And as soon as someone say, got you, Mr. Ezzy. <laughs> oh, I got Then I drop 40. 
Like sometimes you can't waken the bear in somebody else who's a real bear. Some people bark, but they're not dogs, right? The thing about the difference between Golden State and Memphis, uh, Memphis Grizzlies is that the Memphis Grizzlies, they, 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 let me ask you this question. Are the lights talking right now? Yes. Uh, no. are, are, these, are these lights saying anything to us right now? No. But it's energy, right? Yeah. See, when you light, you don't have to tell people you light. When you who you are, you just show it. Light just saying, hey, I'm just here, right? It, the best energy is energy that is felt, seen, and never heard. Not never heard, but heard last. Because a lot of people, they talk about, and y'all heard this phrase, I'm him. What's that mean? When someone says, I'm him. You're that good, right? How many of us in this room said, I'm him, but we ain't him yet? <laughs> We've done it. We all, I know we all be talking to us about y'all him, and y'all him, and y'all him on the bench. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The thing about being him, we have to learn from Jesus on this, is that did Jesus ever come into the... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I heard... Well, well, on Last Chance View, I know the show, yeah, it's bad. But still... I don't even know you could. I'm listening. Um, there was this kid, uh, well, he's now at East LA Community okay. College, which is a JUCO school. And uh, in sixth grade, he just started playing basketball. And he learned how to dunk. Mm-hmm. And once he learned how to dunk, he became number one ranked freshman. I mean, sixth grader in the nation. Yeah. And they thought they were calling him next LeBron and everything. And then once he got older, older, he started switching, switching. Because he, they, they said the problem with him was once he didn't like something, he moved to a different school, mm-hmm. a different uh, mm-hmm. team. And he switched so much that in high school, he got no offers. Wow. So... And now he's at a community college in Juco on the bench. Do you know what certain energies communicate? Uh, I don't know. And he didn't even finish high school. Think about it like this. Sometimes, it's, imagine the lights in this room being upset because they're not in another room. See, certain things, see, the thing about this culture that is damaging is that there are certain things that are going against the principles of real life. What I mean by is this. A job, a partner, someone that wants to invest in you, why would they invest if you always move around? If you can't keep your energy in one place, like people care, like why do you think Deion Sanders got the Colorado job? Now what if he would have left after one year at Jackson State and then left the year after that to go to another school? He stayed somewhere for three years and his energy in one place transformed it. Now people's like, you know what? You was making $300,000 a year here. We'll give you $5 million a year to do the same. Do you know Colorado University, before they even do one hike, or whatever y'all call it in football, before they do one snap, they're going to make half a billion dollars off that man? He's getting underpaid. <laughs> Jackson State got so many recruits. Once he came, they got the number one uh, senior in the football. But 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 how many years? So let me tell you people this: is that uh, Pica- uh, P- uh what's the artist's name, Mister uh, Pastor Chisholm? Uh, Picasso is it Picasso? Yeah. Picasso. They say he was drawing something in a restaurant. Oh, he was in a restaurant, and a lady was like, "Oh, it's Picasso." Whoever the artist was, Basquiat, I forgot who it was, and she was like, um, "Can you draw me something?" He said, "Sure." He drew something on a napkin, and she was like, "Can I have?" He said, "It'd be twenty five some thousand dollars." She said, but you drew it in five minutes. No, he said, you're paying for my 20 years of experience. You're not just paying me because I drew on a napkin. Cool, I drew on a napkin. But if you took this napkin to eBay, not eBay, but if you took this napkin to an art exhibit, they're going to give you a million dollars because it's a Basquiat drawing on a napkin. The thing is, if you don't keep your energy in a place and build experience and, and utilize the, the trials and tribulations of that place, a lot of you all don't want to be at victory, I understand it. But it could be, usually it's best to be at a place you don't like early so you can learn how to be settled in a place you don't want to be. Because if you don't know how to handle a place you don't want to be, you will not handle a place you want to be. If you can't handle being single, you ain't going to be able to handle being with a girl, Right? And so what we're trying to say is, is that, uh, what am I trying to say? Man, I'm all over the place, but we rock, we roll. Um, let's get to some scriptures, man. We got to make sure we lay some foundation with the word of God, man. 
Um, Ecclesiastes 9, 10 says, whatever your hands finds to do, do with your might. Whatever your hands find themselves to do. That's right, right? We ain't talking about selling drugs or nothing like that. Whatever you find your hands to do, do with all your might. So if your hands is on a science book, give it all your might. If your hands is on an English book, give it all your might. You may not be the smartest, but give it your smartness, your smartness. Like, give it your best, right? If your hands pick up a basketball, if your hands pick up someone off the floor, if your hands pick up a paper off the floor, give it your all might. If you can't, if you can't give science everything, you won't be able to give the other things, anything, because you can't cut this on and off. You can't go in life and be like, okay, I'm going to cut this on and cut it off. It has to be the same energy. Kobe gave the same energy that he gave the basketball to, to, to his uh, uh, art, whatever he was doing. Right? You've got to keep it. So, for instance, as a man, and Pastor Chisholm understanding right now, th- listen, there be times when I come home and I done gave all this energy here. Do you think my wife wants leftover energy? <laughs> she wants that same energy. Same. Not just yes, same. My wife, my wife shifted. Holy Spirit, most definitely. But my wife shifted my perspective when it came to my ministry. Like, no. Let me make this plain. Same energy is not always same energy. What I mean is this. Like, I should never give. My wife should get more premium energy than she does, than my ministry does. So I'm not sitting there saying like, well, that makes sense down the road. What I'm saying is this. <laughs> no matter what it is in life, you got to give it that same energy. Why? Why is it important to give something you don't like to do the same energy as something you like to do? What is that? What is that building a person, the young man? Man, I forgot that quick. Uh, here we go. Um, why is it, uh, how does giving the same ener- or sa- giving the same energy in a in a, something you don't want to do is important? Hold on. <laughs> oh. Basically, what I'm trying to say is why what builds in a young man's life when they give the same energy in something they don't like as in a thing they do like? Character. Character. There we go. Thank you. And it took about t- twenty seconds of my life to get that out. Character. Why is character important? Because it's like character is you are. how you are. Character is you. Character is you. Character is you. Like when you by yourself, that's the real you. I wish we gave the same energy that God gave us to ourselves. A lot of young men, and maybe and please step in anytime, my brother. Same energy, like, I think the reason why we don't give the same confident energy in our work and like all the stuff that we do is because we don't give that same energy to ourselves. We don't love ourselves. So I'm, a lot of, this talk goes to girls a lot. They probably talk about, they got tears going over there probably. They probably over there having a moment. Kumba, they probably hands, shaking hands and, and tears falling. But when it comes to self-love for young men, we don't talk about that much. Like, do you, when you look in the mirror, do you like it? Bro, we all, Mr. Pastor Chisholm tell you, we all had insecure moments, man. Mm-hmm. We've all had moments where we was like, man, that guy is more handsome than me. <laughs> that guy does do not how to dunk. That guy is better at back. Who cares? God makes one of ones. <clears throat> Lamella wasn't the first one to say one of one. Like, God was the one that made, made one of ones, right? And when you understand that, you look in the mirror, you're like, no, yeah, I'm handsome. Yeah, I got picked on having a big head. Y'all heard me say that the best joke, the best big-headed joke I ever got was that, Josh, you are a teenage mutant ninja turtle that can't put his head back in the shell. Your head so big that you can't put your head back in the shell. I said, man, I cried in my heart. And, but that was good at the same time. I didn't know if it was tears of, tears of like, because of humor or tears because my heart was hurt. Either way, what I tell people all the time, if you don't own it, somebody will sell it against you. Mm-hmm. What I mean by this, I, yeah, of course, if I'm, if I'm insecure, I'm wait, get in the gym, Josh, but I can't shave this forehead down. <laughs> I ain't gonna get surgery like, hey, well, God, can you take 40% of this forehead off? <laughs> they don't, they, they don't want to do that. God gave me this forehead for a reason. You know what I'm saying? God made you that height for a reason. Like, like you can't get upset on how you were set up. Because 
being upset on how you were set up is going to help, help it will hinder you from being set up. You was made like, listen, I, you, I only, if Pastor doesn't know this for a fact, you only have to be handsome to one girl. That's all you need. That's all you need. You don't got to have every girl liking you. All you need, all you need, and we both out, our, both our ladies is, is top tier. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to be all like, oh, I got to be like this. Man, listen, what God has for you is looking for you. It's looking for you with your big forehead, with you at five, five, whatever your height is. Whatever God has for you is looking for how you were made. Don't make me So now you have to keep that same energy with you and say, okay, God, if you've got this energy towards me, I'm going to keep that same energy to me so I can use that energy to attract the things that are energized by me. If I don't keep the same energy and I go home, how can I energize my wife? How can I energize my daughter? How can I energize my purpose? So I got to go to God. God, give me energy. God, God, reveal to me. And what's, what's our battery pack? What's our, what's our Tesla battery? What's, what's our energy source? Now, I only want to call the Holy Spirit why to get an answer. He's not a battery because the battery has to be recharged. But there's an energy in us that just, say it again, renewable. That's, it, it's renewable energy. That's right. It never fades away. So if I tap into that energy in me and I have that energy for me, then you can energize any place. What needs you to be energized? Always. Like, imagine Pastor Chisholm and myself coming this, coming this building every day, sad. Listen, listen, I got a whole family. He's about to start one, and he has a whole church. And we still come in here energized. <laughs> Probably running off two and a half hours of sleep, running off carrying the burdens of, of, of people, and we... We, that is, it, that's humanly impossible to do what we do if we ain't tapped in. Because how can you pour out if you're not tapped in? And so what you got to think about is, okay, I need to energize something. I got to keep that same energy everywhere. I'm going to give you a story that I think will we'll be done. When I worked at the YMCA, I was the manager of the YMCA, the Dow Y downtown, for about six, seven years. And when I was at the Y, it was about a month or two before I left that place or I was promoted, um, I thought about quitting. God, I don't feel fulfilled, man. <clears throat> I'm tired. I'm tired of working till 11 o'clock every night. You know, I'm, I'm about to get married and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, well, that was dating my wife at the time. And the Holy Spirit told me, or I felt in my spirit was, stay here. I had a job opportunity to go to. I was like, I'm going to take my energy. I'm going to take my ball somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Right. I had to grab some God. Those spirits said, don't go there. And he, but he said, change your attitude while you're here. What's the word? What's one word in there that's important? T-H-E-R-E. -E. What's in there? Here. here. If I can't take care of here, how can I take care of there? Right? So I said, you know what? I'm going to show up every day energized, excited to be here, even though I don't want to be here. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be excited. This lady comes in every Wednesday and Thursday. Every Wednesday and Thursday, I gave her, she gave me her keys, I gave her a yoga mat, or she gave me her keys, I gave her a lock to her locker, right? One day she comes in and she says, you know what, I like, in other, word, in other words, your energy. I like what you give. Have you thought about another job opportunity? I said, I thought it was a pyramid scheme. I was like, oh, it depends what you said. What do you think, do you think that you may be interested at working at a school? She said, do you have a college degree? I said, no, ma'am, I don't have a college degree. And she said, I'll call you back. She called me back the next day. She said, we'll, we'll take you if you have a high school phone. I said, I've got a high school phone. She said, we need your energy in our school building. I got promoted off of good energy. If you can't keep energy in a bad place, how can you keep good energy in any place? Because any place you want to go to, you think, you think middle school ball practice is hard? <laughs> you think JV practice is hard? You think varsity practice on? Oh, have you ever been in a college practice? I've been graced to be in a college practice. I've been graced to be in NBA practice. You think that hard? Your dads ain't cussing y'all out. <laughs> you go to these secular colleges, you go to these NBA teams, they cussing you and your mama out. <laughs> they talking crazy. You running, running, running. Like, like, oh, you, you. if you can't handle the energy here, 
So what I'm trying to say is, is that sometimes God will. You're here, right? You don't want to be here. You'd rather be here. But this is the proximity of your promotion. Could it be you possibly not liking victory? It's the place that you meet that lifelong friend that y'all do a business together at 27. Could it be that you're here right now that you might not like, but you heard a message from one of us that changed your life forever? God is a God of proximity. Because he know he knew I lived all the way over here. This woman lived within the proximity of this place. He said, if you move out this way, she don't even shop over here. She don't live over there. So if you are out of proximity, how can I get the promoter? Does God come down and grab you, Riley, and says, I'm going to promote you here? Does he do that? He uses what to do it? People. And if you are not a people energizer, people will energize your pockets. I'm telling you, man, why do you think Andre Iguodala can play for 20 years? You don't have Haslam to play for 20 years. Somebody said, they got good energy. <laughs> and you see these people who uh, carry guns to the locker room. You see these guys who smoke weed, drink around, go to the club. They have a short shelf life in the NBA. Because what, 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 you, saw, what you see Andre Iguodala do in, in the finals? when um, who, who, got in, who got in trouble and he encouraged them? It was something he did on the bench. And it was like, see, he has coach energy. It was someone on the bench and he was like, Young Phil was a young, it was one of, well, I don't know if it was Jordan Poole, I don't oh, know. It, 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 it was Gary. Gary Payton, it was Gary Payton Jr., I think it was, Jack. He encouraged them. Coach was like, oh, I'll pay you, what's the, what's the minimum? I'll pay you half a million, I'll pay you $1.5 million just to be on the bench. I wish they paid me $1.5 million to be on the bench, to be a, come on, man, good job. Energy is valuable. Like, they don't pay us just because we educated. They don't just pay us because they pay us for full packages. Can you give me energy? And if you can't get energy from God through worship, through prayer, like, bro, I wish, I, I wish I understood the power of prayer, man. Like, when the Bible says pray in the Holy Ghost. Build, your, build yourself up in your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Ghost. Bro, Pastor, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, man, there's a supernatural energy. These spirit, listen, are you one part being or three part being? Three. three. If you don't tap into your spirit, it won't light up the other areas. <laughs> Anything you got, Pastor? No, I agree. Uh, the one point I would make is the Bible says God is not mocked. That's right. Remain a souls. That's what He also reads. That's right. So when you talk about having energy for all places, that includes the energy you send out to the person sitting next to you. How do you build each other up? How do you lead each other? How do you influence each other? And if you are sowing positive um, energy, positive influences, godly energy, godly influences, then that's what comes back to you. The doors of opportunity are open for you. If you stay at the base level, I'm going to tell you this, to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the thing about Kobe, about LeBron, about MJ, even other people in different fields that makes them special is that they were willing to stand out. Mm -hmm. But I find there's a lot of people in your age group, even some adults too, they don't want to stand out. They don't want to be different. They don't take stands, they go with the flow. They go with the crowd because that's easier. And this belief system of Christianity is for the people who are willing to stand out. It's not for the followers in that regard. It's for the people who will follow the leader, which is Jesus, and he is standout energy. That's it. 100% standout. Um, he came on the scene and said, I didn't come to bring everybody together. I came with a sword. I'm going to put father against son, mother against daughter, family against family, because you got to pick a side. And so as you are meditating on that, my thought reflection for you is this. What type of energy have I been sending out? What have I been doing? Do I have the right kind of mentality? Do I have the uh, fundamentals of life down? If I do, then what do I do to keep them? Because I'm going to tell you, I preached a whole series about um, back to the basics. And I talked about how there are these great stars of athletes and performers and even in entertainment, and all they did was master the fundamentals. 
That's what separates a basic player from a great player, is that they have mastered the fundamentals. So I want you to be encouraged uh, to do that and be encouraged to help each other. Help each other. If I see Vincent struggling, I just can't let him struggle. I got to tell him, Vincent, you struggling. Like, let me help you. And it's not a judgment thing because at some point in life, you could find me and say, Mr. Chisholm, you struggling. You right. I need your help. You, you right. I need your help. So I'm not even trying to be great to lord it over you, but if I got, if, if I am good at math, I'm telling you this, if I was good at math, which I wasn't, but if I was good at math and my best friends weren't good at math and we were friends, I would help them with their math. I wouldn't do their math for them because that's not going to help them on the test, but I would help them find the answer. If they were good at English and I sucked at English, we would help each other out. That's how we came together. That's how we ended up with, we had a class of 40 kids, 45 kids, and I think 13 of us were honor graduates. So you do the math, that's a pretty high percentage of us that was at the top tier of our class. But that same, all the ones we was up there on this stage, each of us, each of us got $300 for being honor grads, meaning we had eight averages. 13 of us, and we up there, and you look at it, and that's the same group that sit at the same table working together in study hall. Opportunities come for you, and you gotta be strategic about it. Like, and Mr. Esme made a good point about maybe you don't like being here, and I sympathize with you on that, really I do, but you'll be hard pressed to find a place better. I, you fight me on that one. You'll be hard pressed to find a place that is better, that you can do, I think of victory like I think of Charlotte. Anything can happen. Anything can happen, anybody can meet anybody, and who knows what will take off because of this connection. But you've got to take advantage of the opportunity. Thank you, Jace. you got to take advantage of the opportunity. And if you drudging every day that you're here, then you're going to miss out. That's right. You're going to miss out on the open door. You're going to miss out on the opportunity. It's, it's fine. Thank you. Uh, it's fine. Um, so I don't, want you to get, I don't want you to get lost in the distraction. I don't want you to get lost in all this other stuff. And please... People, please, for the love of God, put energy in the stuff that matters. Right. The Bible says, if you can see it, I'm paraphrasing, it has an expiration date. It's going to expire. Like right now, you can see me. At some point, I'm not going to be here. I will expire. That if you can see it, it's temporary. Put your energy in things that will last forever, that will never fade away. And put it in the right things. Even if you something that you can see, make sure that's the right thing. I know people who put their energy in the girls, and it did not work out well for them. It did not. And I know people who put their energy in the games, in the sports. It did not work out well for them. It went, it blew up in their face. They got injured. I'm not prophesying doom and gloom. I'm telling you reality. And then I know people who put their minds on the right things, who got the right perspective, who got the right focus. I'm going to hit you with a hard one. If you have them and they're living, when's the last time you talked to your grandparents? Mm, that's real. Put the energy into things that matter. When, when, when is that? Because time is the thing that none of us can give back. It's the one thing everybody wants and nobody can make. So take advantage of the time that you have because it could be literally here today and gone tomorrow. So use your energies for the right things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any questions, y'all? Man, I lost my pen. Oh, here it is.